Hi, David Millington here and today I'm going to show you how to create a simple Windows application in just a couple of minutes. We're going to build an image viewer. Now C++ Builder comes with two different UE frameworks. The first one is Windows only. It is called the VCL or Visual Component Library and it is a fantastic wrapper around the native Windows controls. So when you use the VCL and you have a button, you have a a real button, the kind of button that the Windows supplies. The second is called FMX or FireMonkey, and this is the next generation UE framework. It is cross-platform, uh, it lives on the GPU, it is vectorized and themable. And it too can also use native controls on Windows and iOS. Other platforms such as Android and macOS are coming soon. Today, we're going to use FireMonkey uh, simply because it means that the application you make here on Windows can, in fact, be easily rebuilt for macOS or Android or iOS. So this is C++ Builder when you first started up, and we're going to create a brand new application. Create a new multi-device application. Multi-device means that it uses FireMonkey because FireMonkey supports Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android. Even though we're just aiming for Windows today, we'll, we'll go with that and just create a blank application since we're, we're starting completely from scratch. So we want to create an image viewer application. So this here is a blank form, which means a blank window when you actually run the application, which we can do right now. It will compile, and you can see that the, the form will correspond to the window that pops up on screen. Here we go. So this window, we want to have an area for the image to be previewed and an area for, say, a button to click to load the image. So let's create the image, image viewer here. So in the tool palette, you can just type and or filter by all the available controls and components, and we want an image viewer. So just double click that, and it will appear on your form. Now, obviously, this is a bit small, so you might want to resize it. But better is to let it resize automatically. So over here in the Object Inspector on the left, uh, there are a vast number of properties for the various controls that you drop on a form. Here we want to change the alignment. And again, there are a lot of options, but we want to choose Client, uh, the third from the top. Client means that it fills up all the available space in what's called the Client area, which is the area that doesn't include the title bar uh, of the form. So right now we have a control that will display an image. But we also want to have an area for a button, for example, to click uh, to, to load the image. So let's add a panel. A panel is simply a blank rectangular area. So find that and double click it. And again, we can use the alignment and I'm going to put that on the right. And so we can now place a button or something on this, this area on the right. Now notice that when the panel was aligned to the right, the image viewer took up the remaining space. So you can align items to the right and left and top. Uh, and when you have something that is aligned to the client, it will simply fill up whatever space is available. Now on this panel, we should place a button. And I will drag that up here and perhaps resize, and I will change that to have a better name. By default, controls just have their type and a 1, so the panel that we, we dropped earlier is panel 1. Uh, it is good style to improve that. So I'm going to name this button load, indicating that it will load an image. Uh, you can see that the caption automatically changed to reflect that. So we should also go and change the text to say load image, like so. Second, we need a class or component that will help us load an image. Uh, and that is one that represents an open dialog. Normally in a Windows app, when you click open, such as file open, you'll get an open dialog. We have one of those right here non-visual controls, because the open dialog doesn't exist until you uh, invoke it and open it, uh, appears just these, these small labeled rectangles. And so we'll, we'll place that uh, here. So to get something to happen, 
uh, we want to open the dialog and load the image when we click the load image button. So back in the object inspector, when you select something as well as properties, there are a number of events, and these are things that happen uh, at particular times. For example, you can see on click, on double click, uh, on key down, on key up, on gesture, uh, and these occur when the button is clicked or double clicked, uh, when a key is pressed, when the button is focused, when a gesture, if you have a pen or touch controls on your windows, um, occur and, and so forth. We're only interested in click, so if we double click this blank space here, a method will be automatically created, and this method will be called when the button is clicked. You can see the option inspector shows this method now for the on-click event. So we want to do a couple of things. We want to show the open dialog. If the user selects an image in that, then we want to load it. And we also want to resize the image so that it displays nicely on screen. So we want to show the open dialog. And that's called executing it because its, it's function is to, to run. Now, if the open dialog execute returns true, that will be when the user actually used it to choose something. So at that point, it will have a file name that, that represents the file that the user chose. So we have an image control, image viewer. Uh, the text that pops up here, by the way, often pops up after a short delay, or you can invoke it by control space, and it helps you by, by predicting what you're going to type. So image viewer one, and we're going to access this bitmap, uh, which is the image. And we're going to tell that to load from file. Now the file takes a string, and that string is the path name that the open dialog has, the one that the user chose. File name like so. And that's all that's required to get the image viewer to load that file. Uh, we also want to make sure that it is sized nicely on screen. So we have a nice method for that already called best fit. It happens to be the top one that pops up for code prediction. Fantastic. Let's run this and see what happens. So we click run, which is this button up here. That will run with debugging. So if anything actually goes wrong with this application, then the IDE will kick in and tell us what happened. But in this case, we now have a window with a blank space here where the image is and uh, the panel here and a button sitting on the panel. And I can click that and it will open uh, an open dialog. I have this nice image here of Easter eggs, which is actually very large, and this is the reason that we want to shrink it to fit on screen. So when I click that, you can see it sets the file name. I click open, that means that the dialog successfully executed and returned true. And you can see the image viewer is now displaying the, uh, the image. Fantastic, that was surprisingly easy. But now we should add a couple of tweaks. For example, suppose I run that again, load an image, and of course it resizes successfully. When I resize the window, the image stays exactly the same size, and what we would probably like to happen uh, is that the image automatically updates to scale when we resize the window. So let's implement that. If we go back to the design tab, you can switch between the design of the form and the code uh, that is attached to the form. The form is simply a class uh, and it loads itself as a resource. Um, and you can, you can design it here at, at design time. We want to change what happens when it's resized. So you can select the form itself here in the structure view. Um, same way you can select a button uh, or panel. You can select both in the form designer itself or in the structure. Here I'm going to click the form itself in the structure pane, and we want something to happen when the form is resized. And naturally there is an event to handle that on resize. So let's double click that. And in this method, all we want to do is for the image viewer, 
to uh, set the image to the appropriate scale again to, to fit it uh, within the image view itself. Now we've already done this once, we did it automatically when we loaded, we called best fit. Now when we run this, we can load an image, it will automatically scale, but now when we resize the window, you can see that the image automatically scales to fit. So there you go, that's your very first Windows application. Uh, it works with surprisingly little code uh, because the libraries that come with CBuilder are very comprehensive and, and powerful. Uh, you can design very easily for a GUI. Using FireMonkey, uh, this application can actually be rebuilt for many other platforms. I have macOS and Windows installed right now, but you can also have the same application load and run on iOS and Android as well. So there you are. Congratulations. A couple of minutes, your very first Windows application.